Hey, this is Rob from Producer Tech, and I'm going to show you a few of the new features in Logic Pro X, which I've just used to create this funky groove. Logic appears to have changed a lot in version X, but it's actually not quite as different as it seems. And if you know version 9, then it won't take you long to get your head round X. A friend recently referred to this version as GarageBand Pro, and it certainly does seem like a few of the new features are geared more towards less advanced producers, with an overall dumbing down of the software. However, they've kept all the advanced editing ability in, so people now have the option of working in a more traditional Logic way, or using new, simpler, and arguably quicker methods. And some areas have also been expanded to allow extra flexibility and a more intuitive workflow. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the new Drummer feature, which is probably the biggest addition to Logic, and a pretty unique beat creation facility as far as music software goes. After showing you the main controls, we'll see how customizable it really is, by showing you how I made a raw sounding hip hop break. As you can see when you start with a new Logic project, Drummer is one of the additional options you get for tracks, as well as audio, software instrument and external MIDI. When it first loads, it appears like an audio track, as you get a drum region loading straight onto the track. The difference here is, you have the drummer editor controls in the lower half of the window, for editing the drum beat, and these make it all very easy for you. First up, you pick the style of beat you want to make, after which you get different drummers appearing below. Some of these need downloading before you can select them. Here's a couple of R&B drummers I just downloaded, so let's check those out. Each drummer here comes with their own style, kit and beat presets so when I load a new one, it warns me that I'll lose all my settings when I switch. I'm going to change my session tempo to 95 BPM now. Then loop 4 bars, and zoom in so it's easier to see what's going on. Now let's listen to a couple of presets. So each of these is a totally different style of beat, using different parts of the kit. Then once you've found one you like, the loudness and complexity can be adjusted with the pad alongside. This is fairly self-explanatory, so if you want to make it gentler, just drag downwards. And this doesn't just alter the velocity values or volume, but also changes the aggressiveness of the playing and even what drums are hit. And if you want less drums in the beat to simplify it, then drag the puck left, which eventually just leaves you with the main drums, and none of the extra decoration and what they call ghost notes in between. The area to the right, meanwhile, allows you to choose the drums that are playing in the region in the arrangement by clicking on the kit. If I turn them all off, then I can bring them in one by one to show you how it works. There are three patterns here, the kick and snare, which can be turned on and off independently, then the middle pattern, which sets the first accompanying drum or cymbal. There are three options here. Toms, cymbals, or hi hat. And lastly, the top row allows you to add further accompaniment in the form of a tambourine, maraca, or hand clap. The sliders alongside now choose the pattern variation for each of these layers, 
with the upper sliders generally becoming faster and more complex as they move to the right. A cool feature on the kick and snare slider here is the ability to make the drums play in half or double time using the last two settings. And the two dials at the end are for controlling the amount of shuffle or swing. and then whether there are fills in the beat and how long they are. The last set of controls in the editor is activated with the detail switch. This displays three dials which allow further customization of the beat. The first one shifts the timing of all drums back or forward to make the feel lazier, or keener to suit your track. Then the middle dial changes the volume of the secondary kick and snare hits, or ghost notes, so you can change the level of these more syncopated complex drum fillers without affecting the main beat. And the last dial is another handy one, as it gives you the option of controlling the hi-hat. Set to automatic, the hi-hat opens and closes according to the beat, where it may change in certain places. However, if you want to, you can set it to manual, and then make it as open or closed as you like, which makes the beat tighter or more raucous, as you prefer. Now let's move back to my track, so I can show you a few more techniques that can be used to customise your drums. One pretty cool feature here is the follow switch, which means you can change the timing of your drums to match one of the tracks in your project. So for instance, if we listen to the bass and drums together, you can hear that I can activate follow mode for the drums, and then choose the bass track to align the bass and beats with each other, which might be something you want to do to unify the sound, perhaps for part of your track, if not for all of it. The drum sounds can also be selected and mixed as you like. This is done by clicking on the switch below the drummer, which opens up the Drum Kit Designer plugin. This is all very easy to use once again, where you choose the kit you want in the top corner, and can also edit each drum individually, which is done very simply by clicking on it, and then using the controls either side. As you can see, you can mix and match drums, and then change their level, tuning, and damping which is like the decay of the drum, so makes it longer or shorter. All three toms can be edited individually, as can both crashes. I might actually do a little fine tuning of my snare and hat with the bass line playing now, so I can tune the drums a bit better. If you want to change the drummer once you've got your drums worked out, to try different beats or sounds, then you have two options. You can either hold down the Option key while selecting a new drummer. This changes the drummer and so loads a whole new selection of beat presets and patterns, 
but keeps the patch the same, meaning the kit, with all of your settings. Be warned that when you undo this though, it won't go back to the exact same beat as before. So it's best to save as before doing it, so you can always restore the beat you had. There's also a revert to option in the file menu now, which restores the last saved version of the project if you want to undo changes you've made. Rather than saving as, you can also choose new alternative before changing the drummer, which is similar to saving as, but keeps things a bit more organized, as it saves the alternatives within the project rather than you having to load a new project each time you want to switch to a previous version. And you can find and view and edit information about your alternatives from a dedicated window. The other option is to check Keep Settings when changing drummers from the Presets menu, which will then keep the regions the same on the track when you switch drummer. You can also see in the Presets menu that you have options for saving your preset, recalling the default one, or refreshing the region. And once again, all the settings in the drum editor only apply to the currently selected region. So now we've got our basic groove worked out, we can create some different regions for particular parts of our arrangement. If I paste duplicate regions of the beat one after the other, I can then click on each one, and maybe mute certain drums, like have one without the tambourine. One with just the kick and snare. Maybe one that's just a fill. And if I need to make any changes that the editor won't allow, then I can always convert the region to a standard MIDI region, using the context menu. After which I can edit it using the piano roll in any way I like. For example, I can remove certain drums. or make my own kick and snare variations of the groove. Then I can name all my regions. Finally, I'll just show you how I've mixed and processed the drums to make them sound more like an authentic hip-hop break. First up, the drum kit I've chosen is the Portland one, as I think it's the rawest sounding. Then I'm adding some vintage VCA compression, so it's adding a bit of character but still getting the dynamics under control, to make the beat a bit tighter. I like the way the new Logic Mixer has the gain reduction showing on a meter on the channel strip now too. Then there's an EQ, which is basically just bringing the bass frequencies back a little bit, as they've been squashed by the compressor, and also removing some of the sub frequencies, which there appear to be a lot of. Next, I thought I'd dirty up the beat a bit, to make it sound more vintage. So I've added some overdrive, but I'm applying it very gently across the whole spectrum. It's affecting the kick the most, as it's the loudest, which is audibly distorting. Whereas, it's just adding more subtle harmonics to the snare. I could apply more of this by turning up the drive, but I think it's enough as it is. And the final EQ is just picking out the bass once again, as the overdrive has changed the balance by squashing the bass a bit like the compressor did. Then I'm boosting the upper mids to add a bit of brightness, and the very top to add some clarity and sparkle. So you can hear that we've turned this relatively clean sounding beat into a rougher break that goes much better with the bass and other parts in the track.
next movie, I'm going to show you some of the other new features I've used on the accompanying tracks here, including the new vintage keys instrument, bass amp designer, and some new ways MIDI and audio parts can be edited. See you then.